White House has put out a statement claiming that two consecutive quarters of falling GDP are not the official definition of a recession. Sounds like they're expecting those reports to show two straight quarters of falling GDP. But with inflation surging to a new 40-year high just last month, some call the administration's talking points out of touch, and they are out of time to turn this boat around if they don't start focusing on the right things. President Biden and his team are bracing for some important economic reports due out later this week. GDP and consumer confidence numbers expected to show exactly where we are in terms of a recession. Now critics are saying the Biden administration is trying to redefine the word recession. Maybe they think that we don't understand. We do. This is not an economy that's in recession, but we're in a period of transition in which growth is slowing. And that's necessary and appropriate. A, a recession is a broad-based contraction that affects many sectors of the economy. We just don't have that. This segment is brought to you by my friends at Noble Gold. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your retirement with a gold IRA from my friends at Noble Gold. Ladies and gentlemen, gas is up, used cars are up, rent for apartments and houses are up, inflation is at a 40-year high, and it doesn't look like it's getting any better anytime soon. So what can you do? You can try trading stocks or buying mutual funds, but returns are shrinking fast. So what can you do? You might have heard about a gold IRA, but don't know much about them. That's why Noble Gold has a team of experts at the other end of a phone call. They'll put you straight on what you can and can't do to get yourself to financial safety again. And if you act quickly, they're giving away an incredible one-tenth ounce American Eagle gold coin proof with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. That's why I trust them to protect my retirement. Call the team now at 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit my special link in the description of this video and get all your answers to all your questions about how to protect your retirement. I think there's a very high likelihood of recession when we've been in this kind of situation before recession has essentially always followed when inflation has been high and unemployment uh, has been low. Soft landings represent a kind of triumph of hope over uh, experience. I think we're very unlikely uh, to see one. President Biden is still holed up in the White House residence as he recovers from COVID-19. We do expect to see him virtually talk about the economy and about making computer chips here in the United States within the next three and a half hours or so. But don't expect to hear him or anybody else that works for him use the word recession because officials are basically saying, we know what you think a recession is and how recessions have been defined for the last uh, forever. Uh, but instead, think about, think about it like this. They posted this, uh, quote, what is a recession? While some maintain the numbers of falling real GDP constitute a recession, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. Well, let's step back and look what happened. Those numbers will reflect the period from April to June. So backward looking. So those numbers are inherently backward looking and they capture uh, different elements uh, of, of economic activity, including very volatile things like inventory. Administration officials insist their plans are working because even though the average for a gallon of gas still tops $4 in many places, they are slowly but surely inching downwards. And some Republican critics of the president are now arguing that gas prices aren't the only real big problem here. What Joe Biden needs to understand and the Democrats is when you inject trillions of dollars into the money supply, you're going to create inflation. And, and also with the well, the global supply chain crisis that we have, you're going to have a scarcity of goods and services, and hence inflation, and Americans are poorer because of it. It's going to be interesting to see how the president makes these virtual remarks this afternoon because officials at the White House say he is following CDC guidance for people that test positive for COVID-19. But I just checked, there's nothing in the CDC guidance that says that it's okay or that it's recommended for a staffer to go into the residence of a COVID positive person to set up a camera and a live stream. CNN is calling this the moment of truth for Biden, saying 
Even if the week's data suggest that the economy isn't heading for a recession, it will still be hard, a hard sell for the White House. Any president arguing that the economy isn't really as bad as it feels to voters is in trouble. Well, I think that's accurate. I mean, look, we got uh, record high inflation, 41-year high inflation, rising energy costs, um, you know, and they, they seem to not know what's going on. I remember a few weeks back, Janet Yellen said, we're sort of surprised by this inflation. I'm yes. Thinking, How can you be surprised by inflation when you spend like crazy, pay people not to work and drive up the cost of energy, which means it's going to cost more to move goods all over the country. So I don't know how you're surprised by it. And you can try to redefine it. I mean, I was, I, was, I was intrigued by your reference to the 1970 Steelers. That's when I grew up. I love the Steelers. But right. I don't think Mean Joe Green and the Steel Curtain could do anything to stop the craziness from this administration and the harmful effects it's having on the American family. Uh, so, uh, I, I, again, I think that's why 9 out of 10 of our fellow citizens think yeah. the country's on, on the wrong track. They think that because it is. 68% of voters disapprove of how Biden's handling the economy. 84% say the economy is only fair or poor shape. And what a contrast from what we had literally just two years ago under President Trump, where real wages were going up for everyone, where we had those tax cuts that were making a difference, where employment was like just humming along, where, where we had growth. They're trying to redefine now what a recession is, saying, no, no, if you have negative growth for two, two quarters, it's not a recession. They can try to redefine it all they want, but Americans know what we experienced under the leadership of President Trump and what we're seeing now. And they can feel it, they sense it, they know it. And again, I think it's why um, I, uh, there's going to be a big change, hopefully, happen in the midterm so elections on November 8th. This video is brought to you by my friends at My Patriot Supply. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is upside down right now. If you have not noticed, every single price that has to do with your well-being is skyrocketing. Inflation is up, food is up, gas is up, energy is up. Um, the list goes on and on and on. Everything that has to do with your survival costs more. Well, to prepare with whatifnews.com and save $150 on a three-month supply of food stored properly can last up to 25 years. It has breakfast, lunch, and dinners, snacks, 2,000 calories. They even have gluten-free stuff, ladies and gentlemen, if that's something that you're into. As a farmer, I can tell you that things are not right when it comes to food. And we have seen empty shelves, ladies and gentlemen, from the food processing plants that have all of a sudden gone, poof, damage. Um, the 10,000 head of cattle that all of a sudden died, apparently, in all in one day. Ladies and gentlemen, the best thing you can do is be prepared to survive whatever may come your way. To you, to your family, to your kids, to your grandparents, you never know who may need it. Ladies and gentlemen, the best thing you can do is be prepared. Go to preparewithwhatifnews.com and save $150 right now. You'd much rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Department of Homeland Security sources telling Fox News now that we are at an estimated 900,000 gotaways since 2021. That's larger than the population of the city of San Francisco. Take that in for a moment. Those are people we don't know where they are. We have not caught up to them. And you could fill up San Francisco and beyond with how many of them are in the United States now. They don't have the intention of being here legally. If they did, they wouldn't be gotaways. There have been a half million. So if you take that number and nearly half it, most of those have occurred since the start of fiscal year 2022, which began officially in October. We know that DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas has repeatedly claimed the border is secure. What makes the good old days better than now? Your now generation days. wasn't in it. There's a lot of reasons why I think it was better. Um, happiness is one. That's a big one. I think it was easier to be happy a long time ago. I think that today it's expensive and difficult for people to be happy. You know, there's too many factors in your life. I know technology is an issue. I got it. Your phones and social media, the shit you're on right now. But it was much easier to be happy. You could sit on a porch in a rocking chair with your friend and a glass of lemonade or iced tea. You could take a dr Sunday drive. That's where the term Sunday drive came from was taking a drive in the station wagon with your family and just driving around in new places, not on your phone, just looking at stuff. It seemed to me that back in the day it was just easier to be happy than it is now, and I think that's a big problem today, and I think that's why one reason why back then it was better than now. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but 
Makes sense to me. They gon' try to call you names, label you with things till you're ashamed. You're a sexist or a racist, white supremacist or gay. They'll attack your reputation, claim that you're the one to blame. And try to make you hate yourself for ways that you behave. They're just names. Embrace them and they'll never cause you pain. They're just words that another person thought up in their brain. They're just names. They do not define you, that's insane. And they'll just call you something different if you change. Call me racist, I don't make no BLM donations I can stand with black folks without a branded corporation All this systemic prejudice, if you live in this nation You privileged, black or Caucasian Call me transphobic, but I support you in your policies I just can't ignore the very basics of biology All I see is men and women trying to live in harmony Not a hundred genders that you wanna be Call me snowflake, cause I'm offended, I ain't stone-faced Social justice warriors destroying us with woke ways Mad because they voted for the POTUS with the most hate Man, I miss the old days Call me loser, call me bigot, call me stupid, call me bitter Call me ugly, call me cracker, call me doucher, call me trigger You can call me what you want, cause at the end of the day Man, they're just names Go ahead and call us not okay then they cancel you till everything you have all gets erased they're trying to tell the world you bad they're just names call me conservative or liberal republican or democrat i'm somewhere in the middle but y'all don't know what to do with that the system got you so obsessed with classifying right or left you never call a person human call them names instead call me sexist men run the world because they're aggressive but behind every man there's a woman just as successful we will never be equal in every way that ain't helpful our differences are why we're great together Call me white devil, I know you think the system favors me My privilege is residual benefits from the slavery Subconscious prejudice embedded in the system made for me Don't mean I never struggled to survive, I guess we ain't agree Ignorant and jaded, call me dumb, uneducated Call me idiot or redneck or delusional or crazy Call me anything society has taught you to say Cause at the end of the day, they're just names Go ahead and call us names We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. This is not an economy that's in recession, but we're in a period of transition in which growth is slowing. And that's necessary and appropriate. A, a recession is a broad-based contraction that affects many sectors of the economy. We just don't have that. GDP will be closely watched. Um, a, a common definition of recession is two negative quarters of GDP growth, or at least that's something that's been true in past recessions. When we've seen that, mm -hmm. there has usually been a recession. And many economists uh, expect 
second quarter GDP to be negative. First quarter GDP was negative. I think there's a very high likelihood of recession when we've been in this kind of situation before recession has essentially always followed when inflation has been high and unemployment uh, has been low. Soft landings represent a kind of triumph of hope over uh, experience. I think we're very unlikely uh, to see one. The price of gas has soared since the president first took office, and his poll numbers have plummeted. Americans obviously still feeling that pain at the pump. A new Quinnipiac poll puts the president's approval at an all-time low, just 31 percent. And other recent polls show maybe Americans don't want Biden to run in 2024. And it seems neither do many in the media. Headline after headline telling the president not to seek a second term. Just the latest, an op-ed in the Washington Post with this headline, Quit Joe Quit. It goes on to say, quote, President Biden should announce now that he will not run for re-election in 2024. He should not ask the Democratic Party or the nation to assume the risk of a second four-year term that would begin after he reached the age of 82. Americans care about what's going on in their families. We care about what's going on in our communities and with our paychecks. And so as part of these polls, 28% said they approve of Biden's handling of the economy, 66% disapprove, and the biggest concern right now for Americans is inflation. We're at a 40-year high of 9.1%. So that's why one of the hecklers said to his wife, Biden owes me gas money. Right. He owes us a lot more than that. I mean, the, what he's done has stepped so far outside the bounds of, of political differences that now it's hitting everybody on daily things that they deal with. They don't, gas prices don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go and buy a dozen eggs and you're like, how much are these eggs? And then you're going to Costco and you're going, you know what, I'm going to buy the big bulk stuff. That affects everybody, too. So, listen, he said he was going to bring unity. I saw the poll uh, earlier this month that said 80, was it 88 percent of Americans said that uh, we're on the wrong track in this country. I mean, that's quite a feat to get 88 percent of Americans to agree on anything. Hmm. But Joe did it. Good job, Joe. I mean, he did bring unity and uh, reunify that we don't like what's going on. Yes. Um, and to accept the fact that, you, did, you know, his wife thinks that he hasn't had an easy go of it because there have been all these crises. You've got to accept the fact that that was part of the job, and you also need to come clean about the fact that you caused some of it. Mm -hmm. Can we put the quit Joe quit bat back on the big wall? Because there was a section of that I specifically wanted to point to. And it, it's this idea that if he says now that he's not going to run for a second term, that that can save the midterm elections for the Democrats. That is so untrue. It exceeds the amount of time that you get or space that you get to put things that aren't true. That's not what's going to save them. It's all the policies that have to change between now and November 8th. It's 106 days away. That's not going to happen. If the policies are not working and the media and his own party and the American public are strongly screaming, we don't like this, why hasn't that message been received to him? A year and a half in, he's utterly failing in the eyes of every institution that analyzes him, and yet it seems to not have penetrated to his brain yet that is such a good question and i know it's it's really hard to admit when you failed especially when you're a politician and your job is to sell yourself and your job is to get people to like you and and all anyone's doing is admitting they have total buyer's remorse mm. you know they were sold joe biden by the democrat establishment as the savior of the nation the person who could heal uh, the great trumpian divide and all he has done is plunge this economy uh into this Dante's inferno when we're going level after level deeper and deeper as more prices spike you know housing gas people can't get mortgages now and on top of that he's got all these foreign policy failures he doesn't know what he's doing in Ukraine uh, he, he's appeasing China he doesn't have an answer for anything and when it hits close to home People are like, yeah, I'm, I'm done with you. I need something else. But they will never be able to admit that. And to your point, there's no way he can pull the plug right now because all that does is unleash this firestorm of people jockeying for 2024. 100%. Democrats who are going to take all the oxygen out of the room and not make anything better. And it could make it worse because then Democrats would not be actually concentrating on any way, shape, or form to get some bipartisan relief for Americans come November if the House and potentially even the Senate were to flip. I mean, nobody's willing to do their jobs within the swamp then mm -hmm. at all.
because they, they, they'll be, oh, I think I'll run for the seat. I think I'll run for the seat. <laughs> And the message that keeps coming out of this White House is totally tone deaf. It's ignoring all the things we've talked about and continues to try to paint a rosy picture. Oh, no, nothing to see here. Everything's fine. We see a tweet from the DNC recently showing rosy times between the vice president and the president when all of us know that's not probably the case at all.